Welcome everyone. Today we'll learn how to handle common asynchronous operations with observables in Angular. So as a prerequisite, we'll download a simple Angular application. So I'll provide the GitHub repository link in the description below. So I will clone the initial branch, copy the URL, and in VS Code, I will type git clone, paste the URL. Now open the containing folder. Let's pull up a new terminal and type npm i to install the required node packages. Clear the console and type ngs to set the application in the browser. Open the URL. So this application shows, displays a list of three products and we have the option to render this edit component, which is a form with the name and price fields and the update button. So let's go back to VS Code and check the project so we have the product component which renders these three hard-coded products in the html we're using a carousel and car components which comes from prime ng which is a css framework so we have an edit product component which is the form okay we have the name and the price and in typescript file we define a form group and create the name and the price form controls by using reactive forms and we have in the roots the default root which is the product component with the products root url and a children component with the id path and it will render the edit product component. So basically from the add component HTML, we'll add the router outlet directive to navigate to the product component, which is the default root. And the product component will add another router outlet to render the child component when we select a product. So the first application of observables in Angular is to perform HTTP calls. So for this demo, I've installed the Angular in memory web API to simulate late API calls as you see. So I've added this API service class that implements the in-memory DB service. And in this create DB method, we create the in-memory database. So we'll return this products collection with five products. So let's update the product component HTML to render these products from the fake API. So in the TypeScript file, we will remove these hard-coded products. But before that, go to the add config file and here it's important to know that we need to register to provide the in-memory web API module and define the data store, which is the API service class. And here we'll provide the HTTP client for all the components to perform HTTP calls. So go to the TypeScript file and remove these hard-coded products. We'll inject the HTTP. Let's inject the HTTP client and then let's create a new observable variable, which is basically HTTP will perform a get operation okay and that's get operation will turn a list products so i forgot to mention that this product interface includes four properties id image url name and price so the http response will return an observable object so basically the http request will be intercepted by the angular in memory web api and return the results from the database that we created so define the root which will be api and the collection name which is products this is an observable so we need to subscribe and in order to subscribe and render the elements in this carousel we'll use the async pipe to subscribe the latest emitted value from the observable so add the async pipe and save it go back to the browser as you will see we're displaying the five products from the fake api using the in-memory web api so the second application for angular observables is to get information dynamically about a root as you will see when i click when i select a product the root is updated based on the id so we want to get the info the name and the price and update these form controls when we click a product so for that we can apply observables it's important to know that we need to add this router link directive to dynamically 
update the root. So go to the edit product component and get the information about the root. So for that, we need to inject the activated root service and implement the on init interface to access the information about the root. So create the method and here I will call root that params will access the params of a root and this is an observable object so we'll subscribe to the observable to get the id of the root to we'll create a new constant and access the key for the id and then we'll get the information about the product based on the id so for that we'll perform an http call so inject the http client and here call http that get so the observable will return a product object we will define the root which is api products and add interpolation to pass the id import the product interface let's create a new variable to store the product in this component so let me define this variable which is a product type and to return the product we'll use the last value from asjs which is a function that returns a promise with the product so we'll add the await and async keywords to asynchronously get the product and finally we'll update the form the name and the price so call form that patch value to update some properties first one will be the name and then the price let's save it and go back to the application as you will see we have the name and the price for the product with id4 let's click in any product as you will see we dynamically get the information about the product based on the root okay and we update the form now the third application is to handle events so we want to update the product based on the name and the price fields and refresh the products list so for that we'll use an event entity object so go back and in the html add a click event for the button to update the product declare this function in the TypeScript file so we'll update in the product name and price based on the form control values so access the form and then with the key access the name and then the value and similarly for the price so we'll perform an http call to update the product so called http that put we pass the product as a parameter define the same root that we define to get a product based on the id and we need to pass in the product and this will be product and that id then we'll subscribe to the observable and we will navigate to the default url which is the product url for that we need to register the router service and then we just simply navigate by url to the products root let's save it and we updated the product but we need to refresh the products list so for that in the html for the product component we can use a deactivate event in this router outlet directive that is executed when we emit a value when the component which in this case is router outlet we render the edit product component when the component is destroyed we will emit an event as you will see so basically when we navigate to this product component url this component will be destroyed so for that we'll add a refresh list function to update the products so this deactivate event is an event emitter object that basically extends from rsjs subject which is a type of observable so declare this function and we just simply assign this product observable a new call http call and with async pipe we will subscribe to this observable so let's save it and go back to the application let's update this product with id3 click update and the url is updated as you will see the product is updated in the products list because we're sending an event and the deactivate event from the router outlet directed will execute the refresh list and will subscribe to, again to the observable and finally let's see how we can apply observables to handle parent child component communication so instead of loading the name and the price based on the root we will use a child component so let me comment out this router outlet directive and in the product component html 
will define a child component, which will be the edit product form. And we will pass an input property when we select a product from the products list. So add a click event in this card and we'll create a new selected product variable in the TypeScript file and we'll set to the product. So let's declare this property in the TypeScript file. This will be of type product or it can be undefined. Let's go back and here we'll render this component when the selected product exists. I will add an input property in this child component, which will be the selected product. So go to the edit product component and instead of getting the information about the product by performing an API call, we'll pass the product. So add the input decorator and we'll comment out uh, this code and then implement the onChanges interface to update the form when the input is updated, okay? So for that, we just simply use this patch value function to update the name and the price. Let's save it and that's it. Now go to the application and click in any product. As you will see, we're handling branch child component communication. We'll define this child component and we create an input property to pass to update the name and the price fields. So how to apply observables? We will send an event from the child component when we update these fields and then refresh the products list. So go back and go to the child component and declare an output property called updated product, which will be a new event emitter object. As I mentioned, this event emitter object, it stands from as the subject. If you go to the definition, you'll see that it stands as the subject, which is a type of observable. So when we update the product, instead of navigating to a root, we will send an event so-called updated product that emit. And in the prime component, in the HTML, we'll subscribe, we'll handle the event. For that, we will just simply invoke the refresh list when uh, the product is updated. So let's save it. Go to the application and select any product. Let's update the name and the price. Click update. And as you will see, the product is updated successfully. We're emitting an event from the child component to the prime component and then refresh the products list. So in this demo, we plan how to handle common operations with observables in Angular.